Hi, this is Jim Jeffries. I'm here with Eddie Ift and Jason Hour. Say hello, Jason. Hello. Shut up. Now, me and Eddie are organizing a charity gig um, at the Improv on January 29th. And the charity is called, Eddie? Australia's Really Down Under. And if you didn't get it from the title of the show, Australia has had some extraordinarily big floods and uh, we would like to raise some money. All proceeds from the show will go directly to cleaning up uh, properties in Australia. And this it Actually, it's a real charity, the Queensland uh, Premier's uh, Flood Relief Plan. It's, it's an actual thing. We're yeah. not pocketing anything. No, so um, and it, it's important to help these people out. This is actually bigger than Hurricane Katrina. More people's houses have been uh, ruined. And it's much better charity than, say, giving money to Haiti where their houses weren't nice to begin with. That's January 29th at the Melrose Improv. And it'll be me, Eddie, Will Anderson for all the Australian fans out there and a special guest to be announced. Check out our Facebook pages. And it's also, you can get tickets at improv.com or laughstub.com. Enjoy the podcast. Two douchebags on a couch. One's a nestle, one's a grouch. And relentless Oh Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Jim and Eddie Talking Shit. This is Jim Jeffries, I'm here of course uh, with Eddie Ift and uh, Jason is also here. Hello, yeah, Jason Hello. is here. Um, I'm here. We've got a guest tonight, we've got Brian Callen uh, sitting in. You, Brian Callen. That's Lindsay in the room. Uh, Lindsay, our producer slash intern, or God, intern slash producer I like to call her. He's, he's totally taller in person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate that. This is Brian Kell. Uh, machete's here too, Brian. This is uh, our uh, sound man. I, I, I pronounce it machete, but that's because I speak Spanish. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More sensitive to their needs. There you go. And Lindsay has a fine set of breasts, if you haven't noticed. I'm not mad at them at all. I'm not afraid of a curvy woman. I, I appreciate that. A curvy woman. Her that's breasts right. are here with us tonight. Speaking of the curvy women, how are you tonight, Jason? What's that? <laughs> Speaking of curvy women, how are you tonight? I had to repeat my joke twice because you're a fucking moron. <laughs> No, come on. Thanks. Can I say that Jason tonight is wearing his Jim Jeffries t-shirt? He, he wear, I gave it to him once because I had a box. So this is what happened, right? I bought a whole lot of t-shirts to sell to uh, merchandise at gigs. It's just a picture of me and it says Jim Jeffries on it. And it turns out that I have a lot of fans who are medium size, but I was left with a lot of fat sizes, <laughs> just extra large ones, really small and really fat. Most of my fans are a medium based thing. So I have one for every day. For Jason to wear, and he wears it down at the coffee shop. Do you ever get any, um, anyone has recognized me off the t shirt or anything like that? Have you ever had one positive thing? No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's. Well, then you're wearing it wrong. You're wearing it wrong. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta wear it differently. Do, yeah. does, do anyone, does anyone Actually, just go to you, who is this psycho on your t shirt? Because you do look uh, psychotic on the shirt. Yeah. Well, you know, there's like 25 t-shirt shops in Venice, so people might be just kind of jaded towards them in general a around question, here. That was really that's a bad answer. answer. No. I'm sorry, but it's true, though. Like, people don't look at the t-shirts around here. I don't think they care. Well, Actually, guys, I don't know. The guys they, definitely don't. Like, if you ask a guy what color he wore yesterday or what he even wore yesterday, most of the time you draw a blank. But if it's Jason, if you ask him what he wore yesterday, it's easy because it's the same thing he had on it's today. It's, 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 the, yesterday. it's the JJ. He looks down, he goes this, but slightly whiter. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, how long have you had that outfit on? Two days. Okay, and uh, are you you're you're not high tonight? No. What are you? I have a little bit of a buzz from what? From whiskey. You, you see, Where were you drinking? When were you drinking but whiskey? You know, you know what? Venice allows you to do that. It's funny because the weather, it's always 75 and breezy and you're right next to the beach and you can just stroll to the coffee shop in your Crocs or even bare feet. And that's what happens in Venice. You start, you know, kind of just developing. It's like you're on holiday. All the time. Well, it is a holiday. Yeah. It, is. Always. Started, it started for you five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> started for your wife seven years ago. My friend said that to me. He came to be an actor and he goes, I came to be here to be. He goes, he just telling this younger actor, he said, don't screw around, man. Man, I came here to be an actor in 1979. That was three months ago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now, I was well, I was gigging. I don't know when this is going out, but I was gigging in Brea on the weekend, and Jason came along to see me, and he came along um, with uh, a, a date of sorts. <laughs> well, I guess uh, it wasn't really. It a wasn't date really a you, date. You, you, you I, thought it was I'm, a date. She didn't think well, it was, was a date. Maybe I was just. Now, if you if you remember from honest, a couple of episodes, I mean, uh, <laughs> Jason had been seeing a girl who uh, was a psychiatrist, 
and Jason thought this was dating and she was he was just a project for her like like she brought like two other fucking retards like this gay guy that was twitching a lot and this bloke with a beard who wouldn't shut up who was yeah. giving me conspiracy theories did, wait, did she, and she brought Jason did, did they come did, in a bus yeah, and that she was the sat in the front when she rocked up with a bus to your house wasn't that didn't that have alarm bells for you you dumb prick <laughs> Did she really pick you up in a bus? No, no. He went on a date That's with this girl. This is true. He went on a date with her. He came home from the date and goes, hey, by the way, guys, I don't have fetal alcohol syndrome. <laughs> and I go, like, what? How do you know? He goes, my date told me I don't. Who asks a date? Because she, she measured your hands. And I will say this in case. He knows, he knows. She measured your hands in, 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 in relation to your cranium exactly. circumference. In case she's uh, listening, um, she's a very nice girl. I met her. Um, she's smoking hot, like oh, hot, really? hot, right? Mm. And that that was enough to s- hey, tell well, that she I, wasn't into you, right? That must well, yeah, have been but more. But Jason, Jason plays the, the the guitar, right? So you you know. No, no, a, I think you're, you're, the yeah, term is really the retard. <laughs> Jason plays the retard. But if you can play the so, guitar, you could have a hoof and a horn. And no, he's the only <laughs> no, guy no. that plays guitar that it doesn't get him laid. Yeah. Because he's like Rain Man when he starts playing and he ignores everything. Oh, you, f- you, f- you fall into your... He starts dress. playing guitar to women and then yelling at him. you'll never be good, as good at this as me. <laughs> like he's quite passionate about Jason, how talented he is. Jason plays guitar, girls get naked, he doesn't even see it because he's so into it. God. And they put their clothes on and just leave. That's but so wait, I, I haven't finished the story, right? So we go out on this date, she's smoking hot. We, they come to my show. Did you have a good time at the show? It was fantastic. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what, what bit did you enjoy the most? Um, <laughs> let's see. What did you do? That and who night? got you your drinks comped? You did. I Jim. did. You had a free ride, he, he and did. you didn't even you he, didn't he, even say thank you. He drinks a shitload, doesn't he? When you give him free stuff. Oh yeah, but he, his date was just drinking coffee because <laughs> she was trying to stay alert because <laughs> she, you know she's she with the nut jobs. She didn't want to yeah. get, she she didn't get day raped. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, those, it was a dr- those coffee drinks were strong. Yeah, she put a bit of liqueur in it. She had to get through the date. I'm not, you know, she's not a fucking yeah. saint. Anyway, so so afterwards we're chatting with her. We go to a bar next door and we're sitting around having a drink. And uh, I go, she's quite hot. And what did you say to me? Don't steal her from me. Like you said, <laughs> you said it. Was hold on, <laughs> hold on. One second. Don't you and I talked her. about this yesterday. He said to me, he told me the story and he goes, we can't talk about this on the podcast. I go, why not? He goes, it's too mean to Jason. First thing you fucking bring I, it up. I, was, I had a block when this podcast started of things to talk about. <laughs> and so my, my brain was just going, don't talk about how that re- that woman who likes retards didn't like Jason. Well, no, I mean, I came to the conclusion myself that she just collects crazies. Oh, yeah. so, one but so, so what, what, I, I can't I, stand that shit. That's called a varsity cock tease what did she uh what did she do like what what was the point did she did she give you any kind of a an opening or she just wanted well, you to come uh, yeah along? i asked her uh i asked her out to go to eat a while back and we went out and we had a good time and and you know i treated so i just i thought that's whoa, whoa. right 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 uh, yeah. this you kind treated? where did you take her we went to a Mediterranean place. The dumpster behind the Mediterranean yeah. place, or the actual Mediterranean place. Are you, are you low? On. Are you low on funds? You got money? Or? He well, wears a Jim broke, Jeffries generally. T-shirt. So me, me taking someone out to dinner is a pretty big deal. Like that's yeah. a lot of work. Like that was three months ago when he had that date, and he saved up again for this next date. <laughs> exactly <laughs> where he took her, where he took her where everything was free. Yeah, yeah. and Girl, she drove you, didn't she? How old, no, no. How one of those other how old guys is this did. Chick? Uh, it's 26, 27. Yeah, it's hard. As soon as they start reaching that 30 mark, then the whole starving artist thing gets old for them. They're just looking for stability. You know what I mean? So, so who do you think, what age should Jason shoot for? (laughs) I would go with, I would start combing the high schools and see how that goes. Yeah. (laughs) Little Dudley Dawson action. That's all. What does that that mean? Fucking reference. Who's Dudley Dawson? Booger. What? Re- what? Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Combing Nerds. The it's, a twi- it's a 30 year old reference, but the oh, point yeah. is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming the high school booger? It's Come a, on. It's a 30 year old reference. And, and the guy, and was, you, like, and the guy was like number eight on the call sheet. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I like how Jason's like, you know, Revenge of the Nerds, that reality program. <laughs> he, he couldn't believe none of us knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, like, duh. Revenge you, of the Nerds, Brian, you, you knew it. You knew what I meant. How many Revenge of the Nerds movies was that guy in? All of them. Ah, uh, see, not the, not the one. Oh, no, he was. He was the one that Booger was in all was of them. Car- even I saw him on the beach. He actually, he actually works. I called him Booger. He actually works a lot. He was just in, he was in Ray. He played Ray's, uh, like, manager or whatever. Remember? 
He was the, the, uh, oh, Ray, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the uh, blind Jimmy guy Park. beat his wife. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, heroin addict. That's right. Yeah, but everyone always sort of talks about him. Like, so this is this is my my bet that I have at the moment. I reckon if you go down to a bookies, and I'm probably blowing it for myself, Marlon Wayans has been cast in the Richard Pryor movie. Now this is already known. He's playing Richard. He's Pryor. playing Richard Pryor. And I think maybe the same guy who does who does uh, who did Ray is doing it. If you nail that part, right, you have to play a fucking. Someone who free base fucking drugs and someone with Parkinson's and a comedian and there's going to be some sort of domestic violence scene or something like that yeah. in the film. You better get if you Academy. nail that part, you'll get the Academy Award. I reckon you go to a bookies now and ask for Marlon Wayans, Best Actor, 2013. What odds do you reckon you'd get? You know, um, I, I'm going to go with it's I've never seen I, he was in Requiem for a Dream right? yeah. yeah he's a good actor he's he a good actor he wasn't bad in that you yeah know? yeah I, you know it all depends I mean I watched did you see Christian Bale in The Fighter yeah but it's a different year no 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 I'm just saying I'm just saying that, that you know some people decide I don't know if he's got that in him yeah. Because I mean, if you play Richard Pryor, like you said, you got to hit the whole rainbow, man. That's not easy. That's yeah, yeah. Have you seen The King of California? No. There was an Academy Award winning part in that film. There was a guy who plays the Costco employee yeah. who loads a refrigerator into a truck. He had some lines, but it was cut out. Yeah, they were five lines, apparently. Really? And they were all cut out. And uh, he does a really good smile to camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you can find it on IMDb as he's listed as Costco employee one or two. Just, I think I don't know if it's there was a number. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the look on Brian's face when he turned around and went, we didn't, believe, we didn't believe him one night. He told us he was in a movie. So we, we get it up on Netflix. We find the movie. Sure enough, there he is out there fucking putting a refrigerator in a car. And you know what? He's got like a, he's like a featured extra. He looks right at the camera and smiles. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Dude, my, uh, my buddy, who's now doing really well as an actor, but and I, he had this really big part in Minority Report. And he goes, hey, I can't wait. He goes, I got this huge part. Tom and it's just unbelievable, man. I was like, whoa. And he was there for three months shooting everything. It was like, I was like, dude, this is it. This is the move. And I, we went and saw the movie. And they, the director decided to take the story in a different turn. So my <laughs> buddy, my buddy's watching it. And he goes like this. Ten minutes in the movie, my buddy, he's got his whole family there and everything. And he goes like this. He goes, oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew. And in for three months of shooting, you see him in a helmet. And this I'm not exactly, he's in a helmet. They're chasing t he's in a helmet. And he leans over a banister and looks. And you just get a you get like kind of a half profile. And that's it. That's it. Not, a line. Not, a line. Not, not even a full frontal face shot. Uh, it was the and that happened to Adrian thing. Can we talk to this guy? Because we want to find out who the barrister or, or barista, the barista on the set was. Because we know a guy that used to be the barista for... Oh, we can't talk about it. I was never... And this is like the... F yeah. I was never his barista. You were. I, you know what, though? I actually you spent, told us I spent you some were. time with him. I've never said that I was his barista. Who? I worked, who? Who? The only who? major who? celebrities... Say that his I, name. Oh, I, I served Christopher Lloyd, John Favreau. But you I won't served say, Terry Hatcher. You won't I served... Say he won't right, say tell, tell your Terry Hatcher story. He won't say Tom right, Cruise. Terry Hatcher story. I was <laughs> here we working go. on Desperate House. Here we go. Here we go. We set up on the you know the Warner back lot where they got like the fake suburb yeah, yeah. hood up there. Yeah. I set up back there. It was the day that she did the nude scene where she was in the bushes. In I don't watch the, the show. You were in the bushes. Show. Mass. Well, you don't. You know, I think, yeah. back then. How, so, how, how many men so in this room do you think watch Desperate Housewives? It's the greatest. If I want if I want to see a nude scene, I watch porn. You repress me. I got a red tube. Go on. Go on. The big story is that she didn't know what to drink and I talked her into getting something really decadent and she thought it was awesome and gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. And, and that's the big story. And I made her drink want to hear and the little talked story. for a minute and she went back to work, you Here know? You but that, you know. Now did <laughs> give you a hug and a kiss? I never met that guy. I never worked for that guy. <laughs> you did. You said it on the first episode. And why won't you say his name? Someone said it name. about my CV and it was a misunderstanding. Wait, why won't you say his name? He can't because he's contracted not to mention I'm who he did it for. Although he throws a Terry name. Hatcher story out there like it's fucking you, nobody's yeah, you'll business. You'll throw Terry Hatcher you, and Christopher Lloyd, you know but you won't say. That say was it. exciting. Say his name. I mean, say his name. I don't want to. <laughs> he he can't because he signed a contract because he made coffee for and he'll never admit it again. Why when we're off air. 
What's his name? I don't want to say it. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> and he's a really, he's a nice guy, actually. I did a reading with him, and then I, I was at this ridiculous party. Oh, you told me this story. Yeah, and he was there, and uh, I, we did, I spent like about four hours with him, and, and we talked about wrestling. He used to wrestle and all that. And I'll bet he did. He said, no, he's actually <laughs> Still such, does. And he, but the thing is, and then I, I was at the party, and we ended up just talking, you know, for probably like an hour or something like that about, and he's the kind of guy, you start talking to that dude, Nobody else is in the room. That dude zeroes in on you. He's so hyper present. It's crazy. <laughs> but I got to tell you, he's really, he's a really nice guy. Like I talk to a lot of people who talk, who know him really well. And they're like, uh, he's the nicest man in the world. I'm like, yeah, but what about all the stories? He goes, he's the nicest man in the world. And, and uh, you know, so I think a lot of it's just rumor, man. Jason, is he a nice guy? Everybody that worked with him at the company. I thought you said you didn't work. You didn't <laughs> send him never, coffee. I never worked for him ever. I worked who? on a lot of who? other sets. <laughs> who? But this other kid. I, who? This kid, Ryan. Who are you talking, no, who about? Are you talking about? That other, that actor. <laughs> oh, man, what? He's been contracted. Yes, he will no. never say the name. Well, I actually wasn't contracted, but now it's fun to just not say it. Okay. All right. Just, just talk. Just... And while you're talking, I'll do this behind you. Anyway, come on. Tell oh, us oh, well, they just said he was really nice. You know, like he, he brought this one. What about all the Scientology that, things? You know that, you know that, you know that movie, that. Last Samurai? Yeah. This is what Tom Cruise does. This is how he... Get this, this. Oh, I fucking said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, oh like, well. You'll so, never barista again. <laughs> it's like your N-word. What, what he does, what he does, this is really cool, is all the movies that, like, at least at the time that I've been in that company, he brings on a barista full-time all day long to make lattes, chais, yeah. anything for the whole cast and crew all day long. He pays that guy. They, those guys get like 50 bucks an hour and they get per diems and they travel with this. And like, he spends a lot of money to do this for his crews, man. And that's yeah. pretty How nice. How does he afford it? I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, he wow. must be a nice guy because when he divorced... Nicole Kidman, there was a little bit of a, a, a feel in Australia that, oh, how could he do that to our Nicole, right? Please. And that, he was like a, the son-in-law. That's the ice lady, bro. I've I never know, fine. but then over time, even now Australians, she seems like a bitch, doesn't she? Oh, man. She, she just nice. seems like the ice lady. As far as I, I can tell. How can, she, she had two adopted kids with Tom Cruise, uh-huh. right? And now she has like another baby, and it's like, you're reading articles, she's there going, it's just so wonderful to be a mum. She she said she doesn't have a relationship apparently with those kids. Yeah, yeah. It's like, she doesn't even have a relationship. Like you, you were fucking the, their bro, adopted she's mother the, she's for the years. Ice queen, man. I, I got nothing for her. Yeah, yeah I've, I've never found her attractive at all. At you, all, you know, I don't find her milky. I, I don't I find her attractive that. at all. I don't. When find the her media attractive. tells me what good looking is, I agree. Yeah. I fuck it. I Uma agree. Thurman. Stop putting her in movies and telling me she's hot, right? She's hot. No. The one where she played a superhero. Oh. She walks into a train carriage and everyone's like, oh my God, that's the hottest. She's looked like she's held a vacuum to her face for too long. I, I, and it's all sort of slightly pugged forward. I said that uh, when, said I saw, when, I, when, I, when I saw Batman, uh, what is it, Batman Begins, or what, what's the really good one? Batman Begins. I Batman did. Begins yeah. was the, 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 the... No, the real good one with the Joker, with Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When I it's saw that Dark movie, Knight. that movie was the best movie I'd seen in so long, and it was 99%, 1% of it was ruined because... Maggie Gyllenhaal looks like a Down Syndrome girl well, in that fucking film. And it's like, why would Batman, the coolest <laughs> man ever... And I, I used to do a bit on stage where I said, he shows <laughs> how great he is that not only can he bang like supermodels, but he's such a good guy that he, he fucks a Down Syndrome girl. <laughs> well, it's like they wanted to show that he's into a girl's mind. What a bore. Yeah. I, like, I like sluts. Well, you know, that's the bit you give me drive, Rose, right? Give you me gotta... Rose McGowan over no, you... a PhD any fucking... Oh, well, yeah. I like the look of porn stars. That's what I've me always too. been into. Porn me too. Stars. And people always go, oh, they look like such sluts. I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. That's what I like. That's what I get attached to. That's what I get involved in and moving into my house. How about that? You keep your fucking nice girls. I want a girl with a drug problem and, you know, I don't think huge I've, daddy I don't issues. think I've ever wanked off to what these classically called good-looking people I haven't either. Never a supermodel, it. nothing like keep that. Keep it. You can keep all I, that. I'll tell you this one story because I've been masturbating. I don't know if I've told this before in the thing, but I've been masturbating since I was a small child. He masturbates every single day. He hasn't missed a day in how many years? Since I was seven. Yeah. I haven't missed a day. So he's Not hypersexual. One day. Not one day. And I'm including 20 24-hour flights to Australia. 
I knock one out in the toilet to help me sleep. That's amazing. Anyway, not domestic flights. I'm not an animal. Sure, no, no, no. Anyway, so... I, I don't like the way Jason's looking at me right now. He has something to say about that. He's very perplexed no, no, by the, Wait, wait. I've got a story. Right, so, you know when you were a kid, the only bit of porn you could get... Did I tell you a story before about the women's magazines? Yeah. Have I told you this one? Yeah, you told it. The, pitch, the picture I kept under the bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure I told it? I'm positive. I'm not telling it again. <laughs> I, I haven't heard it. Well, basically what it was is I found a picture of a naked tit, right? And I cut it out of this magazine... And I, it was in a normal women's magazine, my mum's magazine, and I wanked off to it for four years from about nine to 13 you, you know when what? I found out it was a picture of a woman having a mammogram. Like, I didn't know. It doesn't matter. When you're a boy. When you're a just, boy. Just but a, it just, just a tit is unbelievable. What, what, what they're finding with, like, the prevalence of pornography and how easy it is to, to watch on the internet, like with, uh, like, RedTube and all these, these sites, is obviously 11, 12-year-old boys or even younger are going to these sites and watching them every single day and every chance they can, right? Sure. What Could, happens which is I would have if once I they it. start having sex, it used to be for our generation, we didn't have access to that. Porn was something you'd get once in a while and watch. But, you know, girl took her clothes off. She didn't have to be perfect. She'd just take her clothes off and you'd be like, that's a naked girl, man. I, you weren't even paying attention. <laughs> I, like, my joke is, my joke is guys, like, my guys, they don't, they just need an outline. They can drive by a girl 25 miles an hour and be like, I fuck, yes, I fucking would. You know, you just, that, you just need, we don't need, we're not I play that game 24 hours a day. Right. The yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But boys I, now are looking yes, at girls no. and they're naked. They're going, oh, look, you got a dent there. I, they're so used to having whatever they want and they're so linear now. And it's making them bored with sex by the time they're 15, which is <laughs> <laughs> Fuck technology. But it's also, you meet like, I remember when I sort of, I'm talking as back far as about six or seven years ago, when I used to have sex with like 18 or 19 year old girls or 20 year old girls, it was like, these people don't know what they're doing, right? Yeah. But now go have sex with a 20 year old, they know what they're fucking doing. Oh boy, do they ever. And they're, Not they're, that I, I yeah. know, no, I've, I've heard, no, I've heard, I've heard, I'm, I'm married, I've heard though that they do, I'm married man. I would never. Jason. <laughs> I have a child. I got, Jason I got, I got had not had sex for how many years? Oh, um, what do you well, mean? Well, wait, wait. He had, he had a wife for 12 years, and that was the only woman he had sex with for 12 years. Like, and actually, not just you. the only woman he had sex with for 12 years, but pretty much the only woman he ever had sex because there were only two in his I life. Mean, you, you were faithful to your wife for 12 years? Yes. Yeah, he didn't have a was, choice. No, that's, she wasn't faithful to him with women. Ah. <laughs> that was the thing. Is she used to have three uh, sisters in front you, of him where he wasn't allowed to interact. Was really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah my back. What did you do? A, just sit in a corner and cry and No, I was in Vegas on a, at like the Tattoo Expo. Oh, yeah. And she hooked up with some like pink mob like dyke that like seriously like major manly woman type and i was just like what the where were you i was a dyke i thought these were nice looking birds no the first well no the one that she the one that she messed around with behind my back wasn't yeah at all see if a girl if a girl bangs another girl behind move, your back i don't be even honest. consider cheating I'd because, be like, see, fuck it. I, I, this might be controversial to say, say this right but i think that gay men are actually built that way and some not all gay women but some gay women are like that because just so many men have fucked them over do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like controversial. It, it can be manufactured <laughs> over time. Jim, like that's you the can... craziest thing you've ever said. Guys, I, you know I, what I'm I, saying? You I, said on this show, I can't even come unless I punch a girl in the face. No, I, that's not true. That's not true. I said it helps me come if I'm allowed to hit them, hit them a bit. Like, have you ever like made love to a girl? If I'm allowed to beat them lightly. No, but you know, no, you know no. the thing is, like, <laughs> ask with, me that question again. <laughs> with making love to a person, I've never, I've made love to women, but I've never come during it. I've done that. Yeah. Thing yeah, where yeah. you're looking at each other's yeah, eye and go, I love you, but you what do it because they're like, I you love you. I'm a fucking and, bore. I want to pull hair and choke. That's and then why. They, exactly. That's and then why they say, like, fuck me. You rabbit punch him and you're off. But you're that's back. why. That's why you got to date a girl who's like pushing forty, who's athletic, takes care of herself, had a heartbroken two or three hundred times. That's that's the kind of girl I I relate to. I want a deep, sorted sexual history. Problem with a twenty year old. Do you want my ex's number? The problem with a twenty year old is that they don't have, they can't get down and dirty. Like I've got a funny story. My ex, who I don't give a fuck what she thinks of me now, but I live with her for years. Is, um, she used to like to get choked yeah. when I was fucking her. So I really yeah. used to dig Doesn't it. Doesn't every girl you date? Yeah, I know. Well, that's another story. <laughs> right? So, so I really used to choke the fuck out of this girl, right? Yeah. And, um, and then she Classic. like had bruise marks all around, like... <laughs> 
like a neck, right? And, and, the then, cor- and when so and the, cor- then, the corner was. <laughs> but then her mum is like, "I know, I don't trust you. I know, I've seen the bruises on my daughter, <laughs> and you don't want to go. I've never hit your daughter. She's just a tramp, right? <laughs> so you have to go. I don't know what you're talking about. You can't explain. Oh, your daughter likes it rough. Mrs. Right, I'm right. sorry. And but, a lot of girls do like it rough, oh. man. I mean, that's the only kind of girls I'm interested. In. I like. I like it when. Have you ever had that girl who's watched a lot of porn, but it's not really deeply seated into her? But then she'll do things like put four fingers up her ass and look back at you like, huh, <laughs> huh? What do you think of that? Uh, 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 <laughs> I think hepatitis. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Clean those fingers, sister. Well, back to back to the story of Jason uh, not having sex for how long? Well, once no. you broke up. Does it count with with me? What you? What, what? He no, never can April, answer. How many it? months? Six. Okay, maybe? so six months. He finally had sex again, yeah. and he calls me and he goes, "It's a whole new world out there." He's like, "I've been, you know, I've been with the same woman for twelve years. Wow, it's crazy out there." And then I go, "What? How? How? Why? What? How? We we did it all night, all night, all night." And I go, "Really, all night?" He goes, "Yeah, but I didn't come." I go, why not? He goes, I had to take a shit. But when you say when you say that you fucked all night, you didn't really fuck all night. You fucked for a little bit and stopped for a long time, then fucked a little bit again. No. No, you did not fuck all night. You were in her the entire time. All right. T- stand up right now and just thrust your hips like that. Yeah, until yeah, yeah. We want to see you thrust I like you're fucking like that. Yeah, just do that. Right. No, but actually, it was more like I want to see you do. Oh, all right, man. do that for as long as you that can. God, do, we need do, that do that for as long as you can. I can do that for hours. Bro, all right. Twenty minutes is a long. Time. I will give you. I will give you thirty dollars if you do that vigorously. For 10 minutes. By the way, I'm, I always say that. 20 minutes is a long fucking time if you're really fucking. Let's, uh, vigorously. Point, maybe. I'll think about that, Pat. You're you going to knock back. How much were you just on me? 60 bucks. 60 bucks. Get up. Do it. Right now. Right, right now. now. 10 minutes of 10 minutes of thrusting. We will thrusting. carry on. We will come back Can to you every now and yes, again. We will talk to you. You can keep the microphone. Just keep thrusting. 60 bucks. 60 Jason. bucks. 10 minutes. 60, 60 bucks. bucks. You can't you put many, a... You know how many dog walks that is for you? So who's gonna Who's gonna watch and judge me doing? We We're all gonna are. watch someone. Someone just get up and do it. it. It just went down to fifty nine dollars. Yeah, your money's going down fifty nine dollars. Stand up and do it. Fifty eight dollars. Fifty seven. Right, maybe Jim's right. Okay. Maybe I did like <laughs> leg for a little while. Out, How all right, leave me alone. Okay. Jim Jeffries gets to the truth. All right. Jim. And what do I win for that? Nothing. <laughs> it's so funny. We have to offer him money for see, everything. See, the thing is, at the moment now, because we, we did open the web page on the last uh, podcast, which is Jim and Eddie at yahoo.com. If you want to write in, we had some letters in, and people were asking questions. And most questions that are asked of us. Are questions that are directed at you. Yeah, they're all questions all for you. All questions for Here's you. Here's one. Here's one. I, I got on Twitter. This question says, if the opportunity arose that Jim's mom would sleep with Jason, would he do it just to claim he has now slept with three people? More you'd do it just to sleep in my gene pool, wouldn't you? <laughs> so you'd have that little bit of happiness in your life. Here's another one for you. I want you to answer this. Yeah. And, Who, answer, would you sleep with my mother? No. Why, Why not? Because it's your mother. I'd sleep with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Jim Jeffries. <laughs> I wouldn't make love to your mother. Uh, who does Jason have more of a man crush on, you or Jim? Yeah, who would you show if you had to? That question was asked twice. All right, well, let him answer. Don't gonna, answer another uh, question. Uh, every day's different, you know. Every day's different. <laughs> you know? who, who would who would you rather have a friend for life with out of the two of us? Why do you guys always ask me these horrible questions? No, because questions? If, if I had to ask... These are horrible. If I had to ask out of you and Eddie, I'd pick Eddie. And who would you pick out of me and, and me and Jason? Wait, did you just say you'd rather... No, if, no out of, out of, for friends, for the rest oh, of our oh. lives. I'd pick, <laughs> I'd, pick, I'd pick you as friends. Eddie just thought, oh, okay. And Eddie, who would you pick? Oh, uh, who I'd rather be friends with? Yeah. You. Yeah, okay. So we pick <laughs> each other. So you're just along for the ride. You're alone. Who do you want? Yeah, you... And knowing that both of us don't want you. <laughs> Who is it? You've been rejected by both of us. Both of us. But you need someone. Where else are you going to fucking sleep and eat? You need someone. Who's going to supply you with Jim Jeffries' T-shirts? I'm going to go live with Roy in Israel. 
Oh, fuck off. Uh, Listen, fuck here's, here's right, what if you have to cross? Have what if you have to cross the desert? Here. You got to cross the desert, and they and what, they both know they are the only guys who know how to navigate the desert. They if got I the food, they got the water. Question, who would gonna, be the, it's gonna no, ruin but, me? They're who gonna, would be the most never generous? Never gonna go away. It'll always no, no, no. But who would be the most? If I say who would him, be the most generous? Then it's, he's hurt. If I say you, he's mad. The whole world's blown up. There's two houses left on the world. You got to go live in one of them. Eddie lives in one. I live in the other. Which house do you go to? Equal houses. Equal houses. Equal size houses. Uh, with a couch for in each. Duke country. would be welcome in both, but Duke, your dog died during the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know that you're dogless. No, he lost. And his, the only other he person lost his alive, he lost his legs. the only other person alive in the wasteland is your ex-wife Angela <laughs> yelling at you. You have to go in some and direction. She's, she's firing an AK-47, just firing down the line that you have to go under to get to the houses. Man, this mean. Why is this mean? Because you're making me choose. Yes, it's well, Sophie's here, choice. Here's, here's another on. question from Why Am I So Tired? He said, do you think that Jason has a non-sexual man crush on you and Jim, or do you think that it's now sexual? Jim kissed me once, and you've hugged me. <laughs> <laughs> when did I kiss you? Uh, before you went to London. On the neck, though. Yeah, right here, behind my, by my ear. Yeah, but I was being playful. I didn't fucking shove my tongue down your throat. On that gotta... note, I'm going to say Eddie because Eddie always lets me off the hook, so I'm going to live there. You won't forget anything I do that's wrong. <laughs> I won't forget anything that you do. Any mistake, wrong. you don't forget anything. I, you... If I make one mistake, I'll never get forgiven. Who yells at you more? He yells at you. You more. yell at me a lot more. But that's kind of like my childhood. So, so you'd rather be yelled at than face you get, up to your mistakes. Did you get mistakes. yelled at a lot as a kid? Oh yeah. Why, you had a bad parents? Or you... yeah, they had a bad <laughs> child. Oh, Brian, you want to go in? Stop fucking... I hate how people always go with you a say bad why? parent. Your parents were... Was, you had alcohol they were good. Time. They were smart. Oh, that shit, yeah. That's His bad. nickname was Letdown. <laughs> he gives me a horrible look there. Papa's little disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I can't pick between His you dad that's wouldn't even fair. molest that's him. That's not fair to ask. You... He was molested by a babysitter. I just he did was... that to... He said he had a threesome with two babysitters. Didn't you have a threesome with two babysitters? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. May I say it won't be forgotten. You don't think I forget things now. I won't forget that you've chosen Eddie. No, it's fucking him. That's why I didn't want to do it. That's why I don't want to do it. You should have stood and air fucked for fucking 10 minutes and be a man. If you had air fucked, you wouldn't have to do this. Yeah, you're not going to Hawaii now. You were going to take him to Hawaii? He says that you're going to give him your frequent fire points and he's going to come to Hawaii with me for some gigs. Oh. Go ahead, Jason. He's, uh, he's really upset now. Why did you put me in this? Why did you do that? Dude, just fucking make a choice, please, before I flip <laughs> I out. did, and now I'm in deep... Sh- now he's not we, going to Hawaii. You're not going I'm, to Hawaii. I'm not, I'm not giving you the points now. You're not going to Hawaii. Why, why would you deny my friend you can, here? You can go to fucking Portland with Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. That's, I'm, I'm you going just to Hawaii. blew a goddamn Hawaiian vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, you're okay. And we would have fucked all night long. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't have been a time when it stopped. Not Even when you got tired after a few seconds, I would have sat on top and <laughs> ridden you. Fucking ridden you. <laughs> With my fucking balls resting in my in your That's navel. Right. Pretending to be his mum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, when cum was on your forehead, I would have matted it in and gone, Daddy loves you. Daddy didn't mean to be mean to you when you were a kid. He'd be wearing a daddy mask. Yeah. I would, and you know what I'd make you do? No, you make me wear your mask. I'd make you wear the. I'd make you wear the Jim Jeffries mask. Someone sent me a mask of my face. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really. It's disturbing. creepy. It's creepy. Eddie won't be in the same room as it, but someone. That's sent when it. you know you got fans, and somebody like takes the time to make a mask. They made you. a mask of my face. Jesus. Where is the mask? Jim's fans are the meanest people in the world. I know this has to be... Actually, I think this might be one of mine. He's from Australia, I think. Thorpey83 wrote... This is a question for you, Jason. Why does he think it's okay to be fat, unemployed, and afraid of females? What is he going to do? Not be a drain on society? That's not even a question. That's more of a statement. Yeah, he didn't ask me a question. That's not, um, no, I'm sorry. What is he going to do not to be a drain on society? I right, see, see, Jason. May I add at this point? I said for Eddie not to read that out on on over the airways. Yeah, you also said because that was in poor taste, and this is the guy you chose. <laughs> Do you want to reconsider? <laughs> He's really upset tonight. Do you want to reconsider and try to get your Hawaii trip back? So I can get in trouble with you now. No, you get to go to Hawaii. You can go to Hawaii now. If I choose to live with Jim, I can go to Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm in. Yeah. But now I'm not giving you the miles, so yeah. you're not getting the free ticket there. Someone 
out there might Nobody be might. able to help me. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, because actually this is going out while I'm in Hawaii. So if anyone is uh, listening and they want to uh, yeah. help him out to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's problems. There's floods in Australia. Yeah. The people in Haiti still haven't rebuilt their houses. But, you know, fucking donate money to this yeah, fat yeah. prick going to Hawaii. If, if anyone has a Concord and can get them there because this will air and he'll have about 10 minutes. I'd also, like, I'd also like to speak about the floods in Australia. The floods in Australia have actually been more devastating and larger than um, Hurricane Katrina, yet I don't feel it's had much media coverage, if at all, in America, and people uh, should donate money. Um, for the most part, because these people lived in really nice houses, and they're all wrecked. Not like the people in Haiti, where their houses were shit to begin with. These people here have lost fucking... These were nice places. These people have lost TVs. Is this all in Brisbane? This is all in yeah, Brisbane, yeah. Brisbane. Didn't you say Melbourne's now getting it? Melbourne is now getting it as well. It's now going down to Victoria through the rivers and stuff. <laughs> but it's not going to be the same. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but it's, tra- it's wow. like fucking... It's just rains? It's just I got to rain go rain. there in a month. It's just rained and rained. But these are places that are normally drought-stricken. Stri- this woman on this woman on NPR today was saying that we're due in Los Angeles for the California perfect storm <laughs> for basically like some, that's something bigger than Hurricane Katrina because in 1860 or whatever it was or 18 whatever there was 45 days of straight rain and the mayor had to take a rowboat to City Hall to do his inauguration or something like that. <laughs> and, and I will could get this happen? She goes, well, yes, it is very, it is going to happen. It's a question of when. And it could be 100 years from now, it could be 10. Well, they reckon that within our lifetimes, so, Jason, that's like four years, five years, <laughs> um, that there's going to... <laughs> the look he gave me. Don't be sad. We're, just fucking sad. We're really having fun with you. You always try to make me choose. <laughs> Always. <laughs> who likes you more? You're still thinking Who's, about that. Who feeds you? Who does this? God. Who does that? I think someone's having a we're flashback like, to the like, childhood. We're like divorced Fuck parents. Yeah. We're divorced we're, we're parents. We're not going to ever leave you. We're just saying if it came to it. And you know, I, I'm trying I to buy my You're kind of like a permanent member of the podcast, it sounds like. Yeah, and the truth is, if, if I didn't Jim, think we were talking about the podcast, I thought we were talking about life. We were. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're not, to, you're not to choose you're either of us in life. You're a grown man. Yeah. And after the apocalypse you, to I, be with I, forever. I, I Jason. Take it that seriously. Yeah. If we, no, if Jim and I were it. to break up, like in the show would go in different directions, whatever, or he would move out. Hey man, and don't there, even say that. <laughs> if there was a custody battle, there wouldn't be. Yeah, we from would now just on, let you go. From now on, we're would. calling you Yoko. Hey, we never looked into the uncle. They would set you free, bro. They'd throw you Oh, yeah, you still... We never looked into the uncle uh, We were going to... Well, yeah. Tell him what we were going to do. Well, the, uh, you know, I'm sure he might actually back me up on this. Okay. You know, I doubt it. laws made when, like, if there, there needs to be something in society and there isn't a law for it. Basically, what will happen is someone will act in that way or whatever, and then they'll go to court, and then there's a decision made. Sure. Sound variances, et cetera, et cetera. The, my idea is that Jim, yeah. he was going to adopt me and, as, <laughs> and he would be my uncle. Great idea. Like a legal uncle. No, I'm younger he than seems you. seems nurturing. You guys can yeah, that a, would be even more fun. You guys can have a catch and he can teach you the way, ways of the world. You, but I didn't understand you call the him purpose, uncle Jeff? but why you'd want me to be your uncle. What is because the, when you're... I, I think it had something to do with like Lindsay and Titwanks and molesting her. It just the uncle word was being thrown around a lot. I, don't I know, know Lindsay started calling me I Uncle Jim. I don't even Jim. know how it happened. Yeah, it now, did you come to LA? To, have you? Did you grow up in LA? No. What did no. you come to LA for? Serial killing. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hide my, from warrants. My uh, my college roommate had his own television. show. Megan's Law. And I, I was interested in entertainment. Who is this? Uh, his name is Jason Smith. Uh-huh. And he had that. Remember that show Playmakers that was on ESPN yeah. when they're trying to get into dramas. Yeah, he played the linebacker. Okay, now he did said you that uh, like we all should know? Who you uh, he you, remembered? You set your uh, you set your sights <laughs> and your goals on acting or music. Uh, music's my passion. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and he has a band at the moment. He has to bring his uh, lead singer over. Yeah. What is but the name of your band, Jim Jeffries? If not, it should be. He asked me. <laughs> that means he's already got the merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> Does, your, 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 your lead singer is a bit of a partier, right? Yeah, he's a little bit yeah, wild. And, and didn't like he had a breakup the other night or something with his wife or something? Actually, he took her to the airport this morning. But what happened? They broke up? Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're... The night I've got to go tape uh, the Showtime show, uh, The Green Room with Paul Provenza. I'm about to leave for the show. I get a text from him going, hey, do you mind if I bring my lead singer with me who's a former uh, addict? And uh, his wife just left him. 
Oh, perfect. That's just who I need hanging out with me backstage. Yeah, oh, he's a fun guy. He's oh, yeah, that'd be really fun. Into All it. smack addicts are fun <laughs> for a while. That's exactly who you want with you right yeah, before you I used to live with one. She was great. You actually, I think you'd really like her. Oh, yeah, I would. I do. Yeah. Yeah, just not. And what's, what's the name of your band? Uh, right now, I don't know. We were coming by, we, for the gig that we just booked, we, we used No Tell Motel. That's right. Yeah. And and what? how do you explain your band? Describe them. Uh, it was like a freight train full of demons going through your living room at 15 miles an hour, as I believe what I said. Yeah, which is nice because he's got the tagline but not the name of the band yet. <laughs> a freight train going through your, like, 15 miles per hour through yeah, your living room. slow and, like, just dark and, you know, it it's sounds, good. yeah. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are you wondering why you showed up tonight? Oh, I'm, I'm loving it. It's been an experience. I appreciate it. People I, like it. Yeah. yeah. It's good. This, hasn't, this hasn't been our best episode. Jason, you didn't even tell how he got recognized. Oh, we're coming out of the Brayer Improv. We're walking along. There's like a German guy <laughs> who's not just like German. He's like Aryan race German. Like Goose stepping. Yeah, goose stepping. That are your Wearing papers? a brown shirt. Yeah. Killing Jewish people, like <laughs> just, German. Just machine gunning. Yeah, yeah. Just, All non-whites in his path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Having sex with black people and then not telling his friends, <laughs> right? German. And we're walking out of the gig and we're walking down the street, me and Jason, and the German guy goes, hey, excuse me, are you, I can't do the impersonation. Not bad, that's all that sounds. Uh, hello, are you, is, this, is this Jason? <laughs> like that, right? And Jason turned around and I said, yeah, it's Jason. I go, how do you know it's Jason? And he goes, I recognized his voice. I listened from the podcast. Like this, right? <laughs> wow. And then Jason, Jason was like, no, man, you set this up. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. And then the guy's like, can I please have a photo with Jason? Then the guy gets a photo with Jason and not me. He's just come to see my stand-up What show. happens, bro? He starts encroaching. Right? And this is the he night. He takes your market He share. would leave us behind, too. He this, would fucking leave us in his wake. This was the night that Jason was on the date with a psychiatrist woman where she brought out the other nutcase people, right? And the psychiatrist person took the photo. Now, if you check on my fan page, the German bloke has written a message going, hey, I'm the guy who spotted Jason. Is the girl who you were with, is that Lindsay? And I said, no, that wasn't Lindsay. And his response was, yeah, she didn't look that fat. <laughs> I said that to you about you. Being morbidly obese. Not morbidly More, obese. No, we don't say just morbid. morbid and obese. We just you say gotta separate no, the words. We don't. Up. We say that you have very large breasts and a stomach to match. After the last p podcast that we did, your sister, who had come into town, mm -hmm. came into this house after we were packing up, mm -hmm. and who was she slightly keen on? Me. The answer yeah, is me. You. Yeah. <laughs> Your sister fucking loved me. You yeah. just strangled it out of her. <laughs> she got nervous when she met me. Oh, I'm going to fuck your sister, Lindsay, hey. and it's going to be horrible. She went home, and she knows it's going to be horrible, so she left early. Oh. Yeah, but he's got gigs I'm going to cut her up so bad, you're not going to hey. be able to recognize her. <laughs> where are you? Are you from Boston? I'm from Massachusetts, yeah. Western where? Mass. Where? The Berkshires. I know the Berkshires. Yeah, when I laugh at you when you say shit like that, does that make me an accomplice of no. that? Happens? Okay. No, because the people inherently know that I'm not going to cut Lindsay's face, sister's face up when I have sex. Do they? Here. I guess so. I don't know. You should know. ask them. You're not funny, Lindsay. <laughs> your, sister, <laughs> your sister was cute, though. She is cute. Thanks. Yeah, she's a better sort. She's a good sort, your sister. <laughs> she's a better sort. No, she is, she's a good sort, but she seems a lot more naive than you, doesn't she? Naive? Yeah. Yeah, she's a nice girl. That doesn't mean... You're, 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 naive. Yeah, she's never left home. She works on a farm. Is she a virgin? No. no. Not farm girls never virgin. No, no, farm how, girls. Uh, how, how old is she? <laughs> she's 21. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, she's 21. She likes black men. Wait. Oh, it's oh, even hotter. Well, it's I, even don't, better. I don't want to touch you then. <laughs> Brian, Brian also uh, was in The Hangover 2. We had Brody here a few weeks ago uh, yes. uh, who was there filming The Hangover 2. Probably had... Would, would Brody have a line or two? I think he did. I think he... I think... Uh, <laughs> I think he said something like, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think that was his. Yeah, Brian, you play, uh, what's what's your character's I, name? I own a strip club. And, uh, but, but are you the same guy from The Hangover? You're the same guy from The Hangover. I, basically, but I'm wearing a wig. It's, I, it's, I can't say too much. 
But I was like, Todd was like, I want you to do that accent. I don't give a shit. I was like, all right, all right. In fine. case anyone doesn't know who, who Brian was in the original um, Hangover, you were the guy who owned the wedding chapel yes. who was like Eastern European or yeah, something? Yeah, I was uh, from, from Lebanon, so I talked well, um, like this. And, and by the way, you've uh, um, I owe you $20. Why? Because uh, I was in Vegas this week working, and a guy came up to, uh, he bought my CD after the show and asked me to sign it. And after I signed it, he said, he was from some other country too, and he goes, and uh, uh, so are you going to be in Hangover 2 also? That's and so I went, great. uh... That's so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think you two look alike. I've been told well, that you we, do. We've always been told like yeah. we do. Though. Yeah, I've had it. Yeah. I've had it before. I've you're I a more handsome version of Eddie. Yeah, and he's way more successful. And so, by the way, great teeth. I'm just older. <laughs> I'm just older. I'm just older. I always take your compliments when people go, "Oh, you were great on Letterman." I'm like, "Thank you very much. I I appreciate it. I felt I felt like it was one of my strong, yeah, it's, it's great. strong showings." It's did great. you? How did you find Thailand? Uh, you know, Bangkok is if you're into just it's very loud and crowded and and hot and dirty and you know if you're into underage sex for sixty bucks then you know it's your spot. But the Thai it people, helps the economy out there. Though. The Thai people are nice. The Thai people are great. They're they're some of the nicest people I've ever been around. And you know they've never been colonized as a country. I think because they can compromise through anything. They're like they yeah. love their king. Yeah, they do. They fucking yeah. love him. They you tell you, they tell you that they believe their king is a semi deity. Never say anything bad about the king. Never. You may, you may. I made a joke. I was on one of these little boats going around, and they take you to the markets and all that type of stuff. And I made some joke about the king, and like one of them, fucking, he was about to kick me off. the Yeah, fucking they don't. Boat. He's a deity to them. They so fucking they love him. They pray to him. So if you say that stuff, that's when ties lose all their sense of humor. Usually, they're really, really nice. They're, they're like the sweetest people in the world. You start messing with their king, forget it, man. It's like they, they'll have. The, they'll have the fucking the smallest shack on the side of a river just made out of fucking twigs and shit but in there will be the most ornate picture of that guy yeah just unbelievable yeah. how much they love him he's considered a deity were there guys on the crew and stuff just banging everything because no. when we when I went Not over really, you're when I went over season I took a film crew they just fucked every oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, well yeah there's no doubt that because the thing is my scenes were in the the strip club the number oh, okay. one and what was funny is that you, I, we were doing the scenes, and then you, you know, th th these girls are dancing in schoolgirl outfits, mm. and with no underwear, and they have numbers, and yeah, you yeah. can, and literally you can go, I want that girl, and you pay a bar fine, which is the equivalent of eighteen dollars, and to take them home for short time, quote unquote, is uh, sixty bucks. If you want long time, which is all night, is one hundred and twenty. So you'd get these dudes who never get laid over here. I mean, these just, just, just these, these like sixty-year-old German tourists who were just yeah. like just with barnacles and just warts on their face, and they'd have like two girls at a time. It was the craziest shit I've ever seen. Jason's really excited. I, I he's thinking, love. He's he's going one hundred and twenty. Where could I get one hundred? I wouldn't do it in that country. I remember just thinking, nah, uh, man, how about how about our friend Mickey D? What did Mickey D do? Mickey Can D. You tell this uh, yeah, story oh, fuck yeah. He tells it on stage all the time. Michael right. Dwyer, Mickey D, an Australian comedian, like met a family and went up into the hills and lived with this family because he was fucking their daughter. Yeah. And uh, they like took him in and they all were calling him Mickey Mau Mau, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, they, he, thought he, he thought it was Mickey Mouse, but it was like, it was like fat pig or something. And they were all calling him fat, like fat ass or something. And, uh, but one night he said he met this girl on a moped. She pulled up on a moped and he jumped on the back of the moped. He had a beer. They went out to the, uh, the beach. He's drinking his beer. She's blowing him. He said it was like the best blowjob he ever had. Yep. He's looking up at the stars. He said he started playing with her tits and then he went down to, um, oh, God to grab her it. pussy and Dude, got the me, cock. No, I, I and know. Wait, wait, here's the best part. He goes, and so I finished. <laughs> Of course he did. He I'm goes, gonna... I go, why would you? He goes, what? And he goes, uh, he did. He, he finished goes, because he goes, I finished. He goes, and then he goes, as soon as I came, he goes, I've never been so manly in my life. He goes, I looked right at it and I go, so, uh, how long have you had the tits? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, but then at this point in the story, I'm pretty traumatized. This is one of my close friends. And then he goes, and so I went back the next night and found him. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> He's my new best friend. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something. I was with Zach and I was with Brody and we went into this this uh, this one place where the lady boys are. Yeah. You got to go see the lady boys. I'm going to tell you something right now. 
they were so good looking. Smoking hot. And I'm yeah. going to tell you right now, I'm a straight man. I'd fuck the shit out of 50% of them without question and brag about it. Yeah, in yeah. fact, I said to Brody, I go, Brody, if you were a real man and I'll pay for it, you take that chick home with you right now and at least make out with her and stick your dick in her mouth. And if you don't, you're a fucking gay. <laughs> Wait, so did they have their cocks removed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. They come gender, to Edinburgh every year. Oh, I've festival. seen them. I saw them on a float. The Bangkok Lady Boys. Yeah, 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 they're like famous. Yeah, and even if you, even if you do have the dicks, are like you know they're like about the size of my you know. It's I like mean, it's a, it's like a, just move it to it's the like side. a long clit. Yeah, just put a little fucking leaf over it. Or I something. find it amazing we've had eight episodes of this show, and we've had at least six stories that involve men being sucked off by other men and not knowing it. <laughs> That's like our go-to well, of this show. I had my only experience was I was in a club called USA in New Story York. Story number City. seven. Yep. <laughs> and I, I fucking started dancing with this delicious little Latin girl with this braid and these big batty brown eyes and this just this skin like brown marble. And I'm I'm kicking it with her. We're kissy kiss kissy face. And there were these booths, these like phone booths at USA that were like kind of make out booths, part of the gimmick. Right. And forgive me if it wasn't, I'm almost sure it was USA or something, a club like that. And I take this girl and we start bub smacking deep. I mean, I'm getting down with her. This is my girlfriend, you understand? My girlfriend. We're kissy kiss. <laughs> and I go, and obviously. I love how you go kissy kiss. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you it's crazy. From fucking just, smack it, but oh, yeah, kissy yeah. kiss. No, no, no. Kissy kiss. And I go, and I go, I go south, and I grab trunk. And I, I go, oh boy, that's a dick. And I, it's amazing how quickly you react as a straight man when you grab and you go, that's, you know exactly what it is. I went, bye, okay. And she pretended, she pulled back. And wait a so, minute, wait a minute. You find that amazing that a man would know exactly what a dick feels like? <laughs> I just find, I, wait, no, how, how do you, my it's, reaction, it's amazing that you just tell right away that it's a no, penis. No, but it, but it was, it was like, you ever like touch something really hot and you're like, fuck off. That was fine. What, exactly what also gets me, every single time someone tells one of these stories and it seems that comics have these stories all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Every coming out of what what gets me is and it, it always what always the middle bit of the story is I reach down, I feel a penis. Yeah. Don't these fucking chicks with cocks ever think I should say something? No, I'll tell you no, what. No, 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 listen, because, listen. Because I can't what happened was I pulled back and and she looked at me and she and I and I felt I was like, oh look at her, she's so embarrassed. And I kept making out with her and I, for another, I don't know, let's call it for the story a minute, but really probably 20 seconds, but for the story, it's a minute deep, deep. Jason's I go right back into it. Yeah, I'm a fucking man now. <laughs> and then, then I fake a stomach ache because I, you know, I had to get the fuck out of here. There's a rule. There's a one yeah, minute yeah, rule. Yeah. You make out for more than one minute, then you got to start answering questions. I think you're making these rules up as you go. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably <laughs> I don't right. think these are set in stone. You're probably right. I was in Vegas. Uh, yeah, what happened after you, when she walked away? What was her reaction? What, well, his reaction or whatever. Uh, I said I'll be right back. I my stomach. I have an ulcer. I have a really bad ulcer, and I just fucking skedaddled. Oh, the poor man. I know. I felt bad for her. There's there's a there's a transsexual. Wait 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 wait. wait. Well, I wanted. To, I had the same story. And when he was describing why the girl, we, why did we hear it twice? Then? Uh, uh, I'm thinking that. that oh, I got a different story. Sorry. No, no. I was in Vegas at my brother's bachelor party, and everybody in the bachelor party went to sleep. And it was about five in the morning or four in the morning, and I went into Club XS. Have you ever been in there? Yes, I have. And I walk in, and I see this girl dancing on the pole they have all these poles around the club it's not a strip club it's a nightclub and this girl's the hottest girl in the club by far and i was so drunk that i had the confidence i just walk up to her and i go i just want you to know you're by far the hottest girl in this place that's all i want she goes you're not so bad yourself and i was like what like did she just say this oh, she goes boy. what are you doing later and i go later it's like 5 a.m she goes well i'm going to eat with my friends you want to meet up after i go absolutely so i go up to my room and i'm like waiting and i pass out because i'm so drunk and the next day i have her number i text her i'm like let's get together tonight so i keep texting her she's like we're gonna meet at this time we're gonna meet she never shows up to meet me so i call her i go what the fuck happened you were supposed to meet me she goes you seem like a really nice guy so i thought i better tell you i'm i'm really a guy and i went Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And she goes, can we still be friends? And I was like, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I've never had a friend like this. There, there, was, there was this there was this girl who's a stand-up comedian. I won't say her name, but she lives in Manchester in England, who uh, used to be a man. So anyone who lives there will know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but the thing is, uh, she used to work as the bartender in the comedy club. And it was that convincing uh, sex operation that she was giving me a lift home from the comedy club and I get, I get in the car 
And she sort of sits in the car and goes, oh, oh. Right? And I said, what's wrong? She goes, well, I'll be honest with you, I've just, uh, I've just had a sex change. And I think one of the best compliments you can give to someone who's had a sex change is, which way? Right? Because I wasn't even sure. That's a it. great compliment. That's a great compliment. That's actually an amazing compliment. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like, which way? And she goes, well, actually, I've just become a woman. And I'm like, well, good for you. And then she went through what happens with the penis being cut and the flaps are being made and the thing yeah. and the thing. Right. So anyway, it cuts to I had to do another. Was there anything about frozen gummy bears? <laughs> <laughs> now, that was on the Friday. On the Sunday, the club had booked me to go off and do a gig for a whole lot of. This sounds like it's made up story, but it's true. Out in a field for a whole lot of amputee and disabled bikers, oh, right? Jesus Christ. Right. I went out and did the gig. This is off the story, but I went out and did the gig. An op- opening joke, which any comic would do is, oh, those motorcycles, eh? They cost an arm and a leg. And just a can being thrown and a faint boom. No, really? Just in the middle of this field. Oh. I'm even on a stage. Like, I'm just standing on the grass oh, at the same shit. level as them. So anyway. That's a good joke. I think it's a good joke, but they, they weren't as into it. So I'm out here. I'm out there with the transsexual who had just had the operation and I've been chatting to her more and she wasn't, she wasn't gay as a man. She was heterosexual. She just felt that she was a woman. Yeah. So now she becomes a lesbian. So she has a sex change and becomes a lesbian, right? So this festival, and God bless Britain for the things they do, this had a lap dancing tent. Wow. Right? Yeah. Where it was just like a strip club in the middle of the day in a tent with grass on the ground and you're sitting in one of those plastic school chairs off in a corner and then some girl in high heels dances on the grass and gives you a lap dance. So I thought, got to be involved with that. So I go in, get myself a lap dance and then I said, I said, you still like girls? I go, well, as a celebration to you just having your sex change. You ever had a lap dance? And she goes, I've never had a lap dance. I go, well, I'll tell you what, on me. And I just sat back and watched a lap dancer grind on some newly made genitals and it was quite possibly the funniest thing I've ever seen. That's amazing. <laughs> like the and all and by the way, all I'm the, thinking about are, the, the, are those plastic garden chairs. How the how the how the uh, legs fold under all the time and no, you no, fall. No, no, the, the phrase of the night is different into the mud. <laughs> but the phrase of the night is newly made genitals. Newly made genitals. I think we found the name of the show. Lindsay newly likes that. Newly made you genitals. You just gave Lindsay the name of the show. And the thing is, I'll get in a bit of flack for that because uh, she now works as a comedian on the circuit. But that's a true story. So I didn't say. I didn't say. I was nasty about it wasn't it no yeah it was a nice it was a nice story of giving that's exactly right Lindsay. uh you know yoshi i do yeah yoshi is this comic here in america who uh he's also a porn uh editor and one time i said to yoshi i wanted to get him oh i wanted to get him a gig because he's really funny he's really dark really funny shit and uh he's the guy who had the joke that said uh he had the joke that said, a uh, girl said, aren't you going to use a condom? And he was like, why? I can't get AIDS twice. Yeah, like, yeah. That was his joke. He's a really funny guy. Fine. Attell takes him. All these guys take him to open for him. So I, I say to this guy, yeah, I want to bring Yoshi with me. He goes, I'm going to need to see a tape. So I go to this how long ago, or a, a DVD or whatever. And I go, well, Yoshi, I need a tape or a DVD, whatever it was. He goes, okay. Yoshi, I didn't know, works for a porn company and he edits porn. So I get a box like a week later, a box comes to the door from Yoshi. I'm like, the fuck is this guy sending me this many, you know, DVDs or tapes? I open it up. It's not just normal porn. It's all tranny porn and like the weirdest fucking things. So after I watched all Have you ever of them, had a wank to tranny porn though? No, I couldn't wank to it. it I, it's too creepy. I've that little watched pencil it, but cock. I never do. There's one of them that's like really good looking with the cock there and it's... I. I I'm not, I don't. I can't wank it to a. The, the funny I think there was someone on Opie and Anthony who told me that they wanked to it and just to give it a go. So I gave it a go and it just wasn't for me. Yeah, unless the guy's wearing a cowboy hat, but that's where I draw the line. I used to live in an apartment in New York City with five other guys, and the one it was one of those railroad apartments where the like last room. Oh doesn't yeah, have I know windows. with all the webcams yeah, that people yeah. pay to watch you. <laughs> the last room in the house didn't have any windows. The sugar house. <laughs> yeah, I know e- Eddie's sugar house. <laughs> Eddie Sugar gets up, house. showers himself with four cocks that come <laughs> onto the top of his head. And we had we called the one room the spank tank because it had a TV with a built-in VCR and there was always porn in there and you would just go in and, and watch. These are before the days of the internet. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this, we're going back 12 years. And uh, and I would go in this room. All the other guys were like Wall Streeters and I didn't have a job. You know, I was doing stand-up, so I would go in during the daytime. And 
but wherever you push play mm. is where the last guy came. <laughs> so you know exactly, you know, because it's like you always turn it off after you come. So I go in, I hit play, and sure enough, <laughs> there's a dude fucking another dude in the ass. And I'm like, what the? Like a tranny. Like it's got uh. a vagina and a cock, and a hermaphrodite. Sure. That's a hermaphrodite. Sure. And I just go, whoa. So I, I call my one friend at his office, and he gets all the roommates on conference call. <laughs> and I go... Wait a minute, you didn't have the internet, but you had a conference call? Yeah, they worked up? at fucking Wall Street jobs. Yeah, they cool. had it all. So, uh, so we get on conference call. I'm like, who was the last one in here? Who was the last one in the room? And the one guy goes, I can explain. <laughs> He's like, I was watching, and I was watching, and I didn't know. I didn't... And I'm like, no, no, no. He was like 40 pumps in, and the cock was flopping around. Have you ever had a wank in one of those booths those peep show booths where the thing slides behind and there's some skanky woman behind the glass <laughs> yeah, careful like, careful with the word like skanky <laughs> you, skanky you say skanky i say relationship <laughs> i'd like to say no uh, so would i i'd like but, to say no but you're damn right i have you know, i lived in new york in the 90s bro i tell you what the, the last late, time late I 80s it, and 90s the last time I think it like the last time the I did. last time i did i've done it like seven times in perth there used to be a place that was like a, an australian dollar and this was when our economy was bad you could really fucking fantastic and you get 60 now there was there was one time and i think it was with Ari Schaefer and Kevin Shea and a few other people. We just finished doing Down and Dirty with Jim Norton and I had a really good gig and this is how I got my HBO special. The people there really liked me and I was feeling really high about my career so I had to fuck something so I made him drive around <laughs> to one of those booths where seven comics stood on the other side of the glass the other <laughs> side of the door. You, you, just, you <laughs> just explained your life. Yeah, I was feeling life, really good about life. myself, yeah, so life. I had to fuck something. He, he just explained. He just explained. That, he just explained life on the fucking road. I, I really enjoyed this podcast. Thanks yeah. for having me on, man. Yeah, but you were you were a good guest. I do my best. You have anything coming up? Yeah. I'm doing a show uh, uh, on MTV called Death Valley, which is actually funny. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually show's good. good. No, but well, what I'm doing it's, is it's actually shot, funny. We, it's shot like cops, and I play the chief of police, and and uh, and it, and uh, it's we kill zombies and vampires and werewolves in the in the Valley of Los Angeles, and it's actually funny and scary, and I'm really impressed with the episodes. I was like, Man. who's making it? Uh, the guy Eric Weinberg, who produces Scrubs, or produced Scrubs, mm -hmm. and he's great and he's hilarious and he knows exactly. How did, he just he just knows funny and that's so important when you got a like a, a, a showrunner. Do you it's think funny man? Do you think you can get me and Eddie extras as zombies? I will do whatever yeah, I can. Like We're using zombies. stuntmen, man. It's a, they're spending more money on this show than they've ever. Jason actually used to be a stuntman. He did yeah, a stunt. Jason is stuntman. What I was your stunt? You, I will keep you in mind. What was your stunt in? I uh, I did that ESPN March Madness commercial. I ran through a tennis court and just like <clears throat> tried to jump the net and just did. It was like about a. Three foot he wasn't asked was to good, do the stomp. You know when the, you know when there's a news reader and there's some idiot in the background. That's Jason. Jason, didn't you also didn't you have an audition where you had to break dance? Oh, I had lots of weird auditions. No, like but what that, was the though. break dancing audition? What'd you do? What did you break dance to? Fart sounds. <laughs> It's for like full tilt poker. Uh, and you guys wonder why China's catching up to us. <laughs> <laughs> that was the actual audition. I mean, I gotta believe it. What'd what did you do? What did you do? I did the worm. That's my go-to. <laughs> okay, we got to finish the episode. Can you do a worm for Come us? Come on, do a worm. All right, I'll do a worm. Right, I'm, not do, worm. I'm right. not gonna do ten minutes. Now of the whole thing is, I want you to hold the microphone while you do the worm. I'll for, I'll hold it for the no, it'll be funny because you'll hear like a. Oh, I've heard wait, 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 wait! I've got uh, I've got the fart maker on my phone too, so we'll uh, we'll 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 do that while you do it. Hold on. Stunt, Get ready. Yes, yeah, stunt, stunt, stunt. Do I have to hold? I gotta Wait. break this microphone. Will you yes. hold on? Hold on! Don't do it yet. All right. Don't ruin the t-shirt. I haven't got any more in that size. Were you, right were you an athlete? Were you All right, come on. <laughs> no, that's only one. Give us like a. Leave us. Come on. Give, give us, us like a wave of them. Come on, one more. 
Whoa. Oh my God. He's like a oh jungle cat. All right, All right, I gotta run. Right. I love you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Brian, for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Um, if time. you want to listen to us on Stitcher, uh, email us on Jim and Eddie at uh, yahoo.com. We got a uh, website if, now. We got a website. I don't know if the website will be ready. I, I always find that to be a hollow promise. Talking shit. Uh, Talking shit. T A L K I N dash S H I T dot com. And you can and find Brian Callen on Facebook. Where else? Brian Callen dot com. If you want to keep up with everything that Jason Howe is doing, just stare at a wall. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Talking shit.